All right, so this is our last video for unit number two, polynomial and rational functions, and we're gonna talk about slant asymptotes. All right, so these are kind of interesting. These are not something that you guys saw in Algebra 2, so it is a new topic for everybody. Uh, and here we go. <laughs> okay, so first off, we talked about this before, but you have what are called end behavior asymptotes. Now, generally speaking, these have been your horizontal asymptotes um, until today. Um, so as your function goes to infinity in both the positive and the negative direction, they've generally been approaching our horizontal asymptotes. All right, which to find those we use, hopefully you're using it anyways, Bobo Baden eats DC, right? Or you're using your calculator and doing it the weird way. All right, um, but we also have a separate type of end behavior asymptote, which is called the slant asymptote. So uh, horizontal asymptotes, you have, like I said, here's our trick, right? Bobo Baden eats DC. All right, remember that comes from our exponents, right? So if the bigger exponent is on the bottom, you have a y equals zero. If your bigger exponent is on the top, you have none. And this is the case that we are gonna talk about today. All right, and then each dc, exponents are the same, you divide coefficients. I forgot dc, each dc, there we go. All right, so when you have a Bobo or an each dc situation, you're gonna have some type of horizontal asymptote. However, when your biggest exponent is on the top, you do not have a horizontal asymptote. What that's gonna mean is that you have what's called a slant asymptote. So slant asymptotes happen when you have the bottom situation, which means the exponent in your rational function is the largest on the top. All right now, if you think about this in kind of a number standpoint, Right. If you have a bigger exponent on the top of your fraction, that means your number is going to grow faster on the top than it is on the bottom. So if you put larger and larger and larger values in for x, the top of your fraction is going to grow faster than the bottom of your fraction because something being cubed is going to grow faster than something being squared. All right. That's going to actually make your function go towards infinity. Right. So it's not going to approach some standard number like it does when you have a horizontal asymptote. It's going to approach just getting larger. It's going to approach infinity. All right. And it actually has a special kind of pattern. So sometimes your slant asymptote is going to take on more of a linear type of graph. It's going to look like a straight line. Other times though, you can have a slant asymptote that looks like a quadratic function. Sometimes you can have slant asymptotes that look like cubic functions. It all depends on how much bigger the asymptote is on the top. So if it's generally bigger by one degree, so let's say you have like x cubed over x squared, then you're gonna get that linear slant asymptote. But if your exponent on the top is bigger by say like two degrees, that's when you're gonna end up with a parabola shape as your slant asymptote. If it's bigger by three degrees, you're gonna end up with a cubic function as your slant asymptote. Now, in this class, we're really only gonna look at one degree higher on the top, so we're gonna end up having asymptotes that are linear functions. Um, and to find the equation of your slant asymptote, you do have to do some work, all right? Um, so to find a slant asymptote, you have to divide, divide the numerator by the denominator. You actually did this in Algebra 2. Now I know last year was a weird year for you guys because you had the whole quarantine thing, so some of you guys didn't exactly get to do this because um, rational functions was the unit that kind of got disrupted by the um, pandemic last year. Um, but 
You can use this technique of dividing the numerator by the denominator in a rational function to get a graph that's in what's called like transformation form. Um, I don't think that that's a very useful, <laughs> a very useful technique. Um, but uh, I know that they do show it to you in Algebra 2, and I don't know if they did it last year or not, but it can be done to get it into transformation form. But like I said, it's not really necessary because we have all that we need from the vertical, the horizontal, the intercepts, um, and then holes just by finding everything kind of algebraically. But um, it does. we are going to use this to find those slant asymptotes. All right, so that's all we're really going to do. So if we do a problem and we get to finding, we get to the horizontal piece, the horizontal asymptote, and we do it and we end up getting no horizontal asymptote, then we have to use the technique of dividing the numerator by the denominator to find the equation for the slant asymptote. So we're going to do an example that has one of those slant asymptotes in it. All right, so we only have one example for today, so it should go pretty quickly. Um, and we're just going to treat this like we would treat um, any other problems. We're just going to go into it pretending that maybe, oh, I forgot. Uh, essay. <laughs> Ta-da! I forgot that. I forgot it. It's okay. I added it now. We're just going to go through it like we did with the other example problems that we've done. So we're going to start by simplifying. All right, seeing if we can pull out any holes. All right, so we're going to factor our numerator. It looks like I can factor out an x. So that leaves me with x squared minus 4 on the top over. And it looks like I can factor out a negative 3x on the bottom. And that leaves me with x plus 1. That was kind of funky. Yeah, x plus 1. Cool. All right, so now I see that I do have a hole because I can simplify out these two x's. All right, so this tells me that I have a hole in my graph. And the x value for my hole is whenever this is going to equal 0. So x equals 0. Cool. All right, now I can go ahead and put my x value into my simplified equation to see what I get for my y value. So I'm going to plug a 0 in for x, and I get negative 4 over 1, so negative 4. All right, that's my whole, 0, negative 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Oops, I closed it in. It should be an open circle. 1, 2, 3, 4. Open circle. Excellent. Okay, so next I'm going to go ahead and figure out my x-intercepts. So for the x-intercepts, I'm going to plug a 0 in for y and solve for x. So I just basically set that equal to 0. All right, multiply both sides by x plus 1. It just becomes 0. So I end up with x squared minus 4 equals 0. All right, and then I solve for x, and I get x equals plus or minus 2. So the x-intercepts are 2, comma, 0 and negative 2, comma, 0. So 2, 0 and negative 2, 0. All right, now I'm looking for my y-intercept, and I already kind of have it. I don't really have a y-intercept because it's going to be where my hole is, right? So if I plug a 0 in for x, I get negative 4. That's where I have a hole, so I don't have a y-intercept. Hole beats out y-intercept. So if you ever have a hole and a y-intercept in the same place, the hole wins. It becomes an open circle. Okay, next up we're going to check for our asymptote. So I'm going to do vertical asymptote first. Um, so that means I'm going to take x plus 1 equal to 0. That gives me x equals negative 1. All right, now I'm going to check for horizontal asymptotes. All right, so I look at it, and in this case, my bigger exponent is on the top. Surprise, surprise. So I have none which means I have a slant asymptote. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna find this slant asymptote. So taking this simplified equation, I'm gonna divide numerator by denominator. All right, so coming right down here, I'm gonna put the x plus one out front, 
and I'm going to divide by x squared. Now I'm missing uh, the x term, so I put a plus 0x and then a minus 4. You could do this with synthetic division. Um, I'm just going to do polynomial long division because it's what I chose for this problem. You could do synthetic though, it would work just as easily. All right, so this is going to be x, so x squared, and then plus x, then I subtract. This becomes negative x minus 4, so that's a minus 1. And then that becomes negative x minus 1 minus the whole thing. That becomes negative 3. So I do have a remainder, which is fine. So my remainder is 3, which is 3 over x plus 1. It doesn't actually matter. The part that your slant asymptote is the part out front that part right there so everything except the remainder is your slant asymptote so you have a slant asymptote at the line y equals it's always y equals x minus one all right so this one like i said because it's only one degree higher on the top we're going to get a linear function as our slant asymptote all right, and we can go ahead and graph this. This is just a line, right? So um, you go down to negative one, and then I have a slope of up one over one, up one over one, up one over one, da, 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 da. down one back one, down one back one. Now this is a dotted line. So when we sketch this in, just like all other asymptotes, it is going to be dotted. So do, 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 do. Okay, so this is y equals x minus 1. So there's my slant asymptote. Oh, a little bit off the screen over there. There we go, y equals x minus 1. All right, and I have my vertical asymptote of x equals negative 1. So I can go ahead and plot that also. x equals negative 1. All right, now, if you feel like you need to use your calculator for this, you can, but... I have enough points on the graph, I think I can go ahead and sketch this. So on the left hand side, remember it's going to go towards that slant asymptote and towards that vertical asymptote. So it's going to look like this. And then the other piece, it's going to go up towards my hole and then through my x-intercept, just like that. All right, so there's my rational function. All right, so it's kind of different because we have the slant asymptote versus just the horizontal one, but this is what they would look like. All right, so now I can go ahead and I can do my, my limits. So as x approaches infinity, um, as x approaches positive infinity, all right, look what's happening to my graph. So as we go this direction, all right, I notice that my graph is going up right? It's going to keep going towards that slant asymptote forever, all right? Which, it's a line, which as a line goes on forever and ever, it's going to approach infinity. So for this end behavior, I would say that x, as x approaches positive infinity, my y values are also approaching positive infinity because they're following that slant asymptote. So I would say this is positive infinity. All right, what about on the other side? So as x goes to negative infinity, so as we move backwards on the x-axis, look what our graph is doing. It's again following that slant asymptote, but now it's going in the negative direction, right? It's following my asymptote down, so it's going to negative infinity. All right, next one we have as x approaches our vertical asymptote from both the positive and the negative direction. All right, so um, as we approach our vertical asymptote from the positive direction, as we're coming in like this, we notice that on the positive side, our graph is curving down. So we are going to be going to negative infinity. All right, and then on the other side, as we come to our vertical asymptote, from the negative direction, I see that my graph is going to curve up as I approach that vertical asymptote. So I'm gonna say as x goes to the vertical asymptote from the left-hand side, it's going to positive infinity. Okay, so that is it for our video for today. This was, like I said, our last video for this unit. 
Um, the only thing we really talked about was how to find your slant asymptote, which it's just division. You can use polynomial long division or you could use synthetic division if you would like. Um, I chose polynomial long division just because it seemed like it fit the problem better, but it really doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, that is it for this video. I hope it was helpful. If you guys have any questions, remember office hours are from two to four. All right. Bye.